in major religions by analyzing their religious scriptures. First, we'll discuss the Aryan religions. Hinduism is the most popular of all the Aryan religions. And if you ask a common Hindu that how many gods does he believe in? Some may say three, some may say thirty-three, some may say a thousand, while the others may say thirty-three crores, three hundred and thirty million. But if you ask a Hindu learned man who knows his religious scriptures, he will tell you that the Hindu should actually believe only in one God. The major difference between the common Hindu and the Muslim is that the common Hindu believes in a philosophy known as pantheism. That is, everything is God. The tree is God, the sun is God, the moon is God, the snake is God, the monkey is God, the human beings are God. The Muslim believes that everything is God's, G-O-D with the apostrophe S. Everything belongs to God. The tree belongs to God, the sun belongs to God, the moon belongs to God, the snake belongs to God, the monkey belongs to God, the human beings belong to God. So the major difference between the common Hindu and the Muslim is the apostrophe S. The Hindus say everything is God and we Muslims say everything is God's, G-O-D with apostrophe S. If we can solve this difference of apostrophe S, the Hindus and the Muslims will be united. How do we do it? As the Quran says, That come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na abuda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. Wala nushika bihi shayyam. That we associate to partners with Him. So let's analyze the concept of God in Hinduism by analyzing their religious scriptures. The most popular amongst all the Hindu religious scriptures is the Bhagavad Gita. This is a copy of Bhagavad Gita in the IRS. We have, alhamdulillah, more than 30 different translations only of Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita says in chapter number 7, verse number 20, that those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires they worship the demigods. That means the materialistic people, they worship demigods. That means not the true almighty God. The Upanishads are the other sacred scripture of the Hindus. It's mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number 6, section number 2, verse number 1. Ekam evadityam. God is one only, not a second. That means there's only one God. He doesn't have any partners. He is alone. Same as the Holy Quran, which is mentioned in Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1. Hul huallahu ahad. Say He is Allah one and only. It's mentioned in the Sveta Svatara Upanishad, chapter number 6, verse number 9. Na kasya kasji janita na kadipa. Which means, of him, there is no parents, no lord. He has got no parents. He has got no masters. That means, he alone is sufficient. He is not dependent on anyone else. As the Holy Quran says in Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 3. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. The quotation I gave from Upanishad was... Translated by S. Radhakrishnan. And we have other translations also in our foundation. Further, if you read in the Sveta Satara Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19, it says, Na tasya pratima asti. There is no likeness of him. Same as the Holy Quran, Surah Class, chapter number 112, verse number 4. Walam yakullahu kufu an ahad. There is nothing like him. It's further mentioned in the next verse of the Sveta Svatara Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 20. That 
his form cannot be seen no one can see him with the eyes similar to the message which is given in the holy quran in surah anam chapter number 6 verse number 103 no vision can grasp him but he grasps all vision he is beyond comprehension yet he is acquainted with all things amongst all the religious scriptures of the hindus the most sacred are the vedas and there are principally four vedas the rigved the yajurved the samved and the atharva ved the rigved deals with songs of praises the yajurved deals with sacrificial formulas the samved with melody and the atharva ved with magical formulas it's mentioned the yajurved chapter number 32 Verse number three: Na tasya pati ma asti. There is no image of him, and the verse continues and says that he is unborn, and he should be worshipped. It mentions the Jurved, chapter number forty, verse number eight, that God is bodiless and pure. It mentions the Jurved, chapter number forty, verse number nine. अंध्यात्म प्रविशंति या संभूति उपास्ते विच मीन्स दे आर एंटरिंग डार्कनेस धो यू वर्शिप द असंभूति द असंभूति आर द नेचुरल थिंग्स लाइक एयर वॉटर फायर एंड द वर्स कंटिन्यूज दे आर सिंकिंग मोर इन डार्कनेस धो यू वर्शिप द संभूति द संभूति आर द क्रिएटेड थिंग्स द कोटेशन आई गेव ऑफ यजुर्वेद वॉज बाय देवी चंद as well as by ras t griffith the other veda is the atharva ved it's mentioned atharva ved book number 20 chapter number 58 verse number 3 it says dev maha osi god is verily great same as allah akbar allah is the greatest amongst all the vedas the most sacred and the oldest is the rigved it's mentioned in rigved book number 1 hymn number 164 verse number 46 sages call one god by many names that means there are various names given to this one god and the rigved alone gives no less than 33 different attributes to almighty god most of which are mentioned in rigved book number 2 hymn number 1 and one of the beautiful attribute which is mentioned in rigved of almighty god is brahma which is mentioned in rigved book number 2 hymn number 1 verse number 3 brahma means the creator if you translate into arabic it means khaliq we muslims have got no objection if anyone calls almighty god allah subhanahu wa taala as khaliq or creator or brahma but if someone says that brahma is almighty god who has got four heads and on each head is a crown and he has got four arms we muslims take strong objection to it moreover it is even prohibited in yajurved chapter number 32 verse number 3 which says na tasya patima asti there is no image of him and the beautiful attribute which is given in the rigved book number 2 hymn number 1 verse number 3 is vishnu vishnu means the sustainer if you translate into arabic it means rob we muslims have got no objection if someone calls almighty god as rob or cherish or sustainer or vishnu but if someone says that vishnu is almighty god who has got four hands and one of his right hands holds the chakra that is the discus and one of his left hands holds the conch and he is riding on a bird or reclining on a couch of snake we muslims take strong objection to it we are going against the ajurved chapter number 40 verse number 8 which says god is bodiless as well as upanishad chapter number 
वर्स नंबर 19 ऑफ स्वेता स्वतारोपनिषद विच सेज नाचस्य प्रतिमा अस्ति देयर इज नो लाइकनेस ऑफ हिम 